नमस्कार टुडे वी विल बी बिगिनिंग विथ आवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन आर कोर्स ऑन सेल्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मैनेजमेंट एंड दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी एट वेयर वी शेल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट चैनल सिस्टम्स चैनल मैनेजमेंट लॉजिस्टिक्स एंड मार्केटिंग चैनल्स वी शेल बी कवरिंग दिस टॉपिक इन टू पार्ट पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू पार्ट टू शेल बी कवर्ड इन लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी now the different concepts that we are going to cover in this but in the this lecture and the subsequent lecture are channel formats marketing channel systems channel design steps in channel design the channel design process the selection of channel systems uh, the various evaluation criteria managing channel partners channel management and logistics and marketing channels so let us begin uh, with our discussion uh, on channel formats now today companies have varied channel choices to opt from we have discussed in the previous lecture the importance of a distribution channel or of a trade channel we also call it the marketing channel and we just saw how companies could either go for uh, you know a zero level or one level or two level or three level uh, channels and we also spoke about uh, the different channel flows uh, you know we have forward flows and backward flows and uh, both ways as well as reverse flows now continuing with the same when we talk of channel choices uh, we speak uh, we, sp we we are actually referring to it in terms of store formats and non store formats uh, companies today can opt for either the physical stores or the brick and mortar stores which could either be the organized formats or the unorganized uh, kirana stores and we have different kinds of formats like the departmental stores convenience stores specialty stores discount stores etc we also have non store formats uh, which is uh, you know which 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 does not typically relate to the traditional uh, brick and mortar but is more to do with direct marketing or direct selling or internet marketing so we have door to door selling we have catalog marketing we have telemarketing we have home shopping uh, vending machines and also the e channels or the electronic channels through which consumers have access to goods and services produced by an organization companies today use hybrid channels and what we see is uh, varying channel formats uh, we, we, we they use more than one channel uh, we have multiple channels we also uh, refer to them as hybrid channels which are managed by the company itself or may be outsourced and the objective of such multiple channels is basically to maximize the reach of the product uh, of the services to uh, you know to the customers maximally so as so that the product and service is made available to as many as possible customers all over the country all over the world and the objective is to maximize reach and sell effectively and efficiently or uh, the 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 underlying factor here uh, is that whatever is done has to be done uh, optimally and there has to be uh, you know always the cost factor that needs to be taken into account so that uh, you know custom, the marketer can reach the customer uh, you know with minim with with with, uh, with reduced costs and uh, can sell effectively and efficiently now a channel format may be a producer driven format or a seller driven or a service driven or it could be driven by others and this decides as to who drives the channel system uh, when we talk of a producer driven channel as the name goes it is the producer or the manufacturer who drives the channel and who acts as the channel captain and he makes all efforts to reach the customer on his own for example we have company owned retail stores and outlets uh, we have um, the csas and the brokers and the franchises so these are all uh you know channels which are driven uh, by the producer and we refer to them as producer driven channels where it is the producer or the manufacturer who drives the channel and acts as the channel captain uh channel formats could also be seller driven the channel members are used to reach the customers here and these channel members you know are the traditional channel members like the stockists the wholesalers the retailers the dealers uh, where where we see uh, that it is the channel uh, or the trade channel uh is actually uh, you know uh maintained and managed by the wholesalers or the retailers or the dealers who play a major role uh, to ensure that the good or service is delivered to the end customer whether it is with respect to b2b or b2c and uh, it is it is it reaches the customers from the manufacturer's end uh, with major effort being put in by the sellers or by the channel members uh, be it the stockists or the distributors or the wholesalers or the retailers or the dealers etc 
Channel formats may also be uh, service driven where uh, we refer to such members as facilitators and they help the sellers uh, in ensuring that the product reaches the end customer. Uh, at, at the right time at the right place and uh, the people who constitute uh, the service driven format are the logistics service providers. Uh, typically today we have the third party logistics uh, which we hear of very often. Uh, there are transporters, there are warehouse owners and agencies, the CFAs etc. who all constitute uh, you know uh, the, 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 the service driven format and who uh, are facilitators who ensure that they, they, the end product reaches the customer, they help the sellers and the resellers. We also have other uh, partners who other entities who may be dri driving the channel uh, channel and these uh, you know for example through catalog marketing or through telemarketing, home shopping, multi-level marketing systems, uh, multi-level marketing systems we also refer to it as network selling. So, these are networks uh, and these are formats which uh, fall under the category of others. So, a channel may be either driven by the producer or by the seller or by the service providers and the facilitators or by other entities. Now, coming to the next uh, topic under discussion which is marketing channel systems. Now, there are three types of marketing channel systems, the vertical marketing system, the horizontal marketing system and the multi channel marketing system. The vertical marketing system is also referred to as the VMS and the horizontal marketing system is referred to as the HMS and uh, if, we, if we talk about uh, vertical marketing system or horizontal marketing system or the multi channel marketing system, these are newer formats which have emerged uh, in the past few decades. Early Earlier, um, the producer, the manufacturer, that is the producer or the manufacturer, the wholesaler, the retailer, uh, they all acted as separate entities and uh, each one of them acted uh, independently, uh, leading to uh, you know lot of uh, duplication of activities. Uh, also, uh, certain functions being performed by channel members who were not core competent in that or in those functions and so uh, they were, it was realized that if the three uh, sorry if the channel entities or the channel partners acted as a unified system uh, for example if the three entities here the company the wholesaler the retailer acted as a unified system they could mu benefit much more uh, you know because they could uh, be, be, be they would be able to utilize their core competencies in doing what they are supposed to do and where they are core competent and help each other uh, you know reach the customer uh, most effectively and efficiently. So, it was realized that instead of operating as independent entities uh, the wholesaler, the retailer and the manufacturer they must act unif in a unified manner and this would lead to uh, efficiency and uh, effectiveness of uh, distribution uh, you know and, and, and it would also lead to um, s better services being provided to the customer who will be able to get the right product at the right time at the right place and in the right quantity. And this led to uh, you know the birth of uh, the, the, com the vertical marketing system where it was realized that it is more important it would be more beneficial if the different entities or different, different channel players uh, for example the wholesaler, the retailer and the manufacturer acted in a unified manner. Uh, it, so, so, that led to the birth of the vertical marketing system. Now, in the vertical marketing system as opposed to the traditional marketing system, the producer or the manufacturer, the wholesaler and the retailers operate collectively as a unified body, as a unified system. As I just said, uh, traditionally they operated as different entities and they operated dis as distinct entities who were more majorly concerned with their own goals and objectives which were uh, typically uh, in terms of profit maximization and cost reduction. However, it was realized that they all they often got to do certain activities or certain tasks which were duplication of activities. They were they were doing activities where they were less efficient uh, and, and, and so uh, it, it, it was realized that it would be better if they acted in a unified fashion which led to the birth or the vertical marketing system. Now, in the vertical marketing system the producer, wholesale and retailer operate collectively and this helps avoid conflicts between them, it helps avoid uh, you know uh, conflict of interests, it helps avoid conflict with respect to goals, with respect to roles and uh, domain and it also led le you know leads to uh, you know non-duplication of activities leading to efficiency and effectiveness of 
uh, the distribution channel. Now, the three types of VMS or vertical marketing systems. Uh, the corporate, the administered and the contractual. In the corporate VMS, the production and distribution are under single ownership, which means that the producer not only produces, but he also distributes and sells. For example, uh, oil companies uh, where, where exploration is done by them, processing is done by them and many of them have their own petrol stations as well. So, this is a kind of a corporate VMS. The second is an administered VMS where one channel dominates and coordinates the distribution activities. The dominant dominating body or the dominating channel here may be channel member here may be the producer, he may be the wholesaler or the retailer and he commands over the others with respect to product with respect to assortment, with respect to pricing, with respect to promotions etc. Uh, we see here uh, that you know for uh, you know strong co corporate brands can exercise control over wholesalers and retailers with respect to pricing with respect to promotion and the smaller retailers uh, bow down uh, to the to, to the wishes of the uh, reputed uh, companies and their brands because they would want the reputed brand to be a part of their assortment in the store so this is a kind of a administered vms the third is a contractual system where independent firms at different levels of production and distribution integrate their programs. The producer, the wholesaler, the retailer, they enter into contracts with each other and work together. This could manifest in the form of franchises or retailer cooperatives or wholesale sponsored chains. So, this is what we mean by the, uh, uh, by, by, corp by, by the vertical marketing system. The next is the horizontal marketing system where companies in uh, into unrelated businesses come together and take advantage of an existing marketing opportunity and this would mean that the two companies which are absolutely into unrelated businesses decide to share the resources and decide to work together. For example, we often find coffee shops in libraries and reading rooms, uh, we find departmental stores and convenience stores at petrol stations. There is absolutely no connection between a coffee shop and a book uh, in, and a library or a reading room or there is no connect between a, a you know a department store and a petrol station yet they work decide to work together because a person who who, who actually decides to go to uh, fill petrol in his car at night at a petrol station would also get down and buy breads uh, bread and uh, you know cereal for breakfast so in this way not only does uh, the petrol station get business but also the departmental store uh, uh, you know will be able to gain some business. Similarly, a person may think that he has to buy uh, some uh, you know a soap or a toothpaste for the next morning and as he decides to go to that departmental store, he may also decide to get his petrol filled which he would not have to do the next day uh, you know during uh, morning time when there is huge amount of rush. So, in this way both whether uh, the customer first goes to uh, has a, has a prioritized you know want for petrol or for uh, you know toiletries and cosmetics either way both of them would benefit out of this uh, you know opportunity. So, this is what we mean by the horizontal marketing system. We also have something called the multi channel marketing system where a combination of channels is used by companies to reach out to the customers uh, generally used in situations where company deals with a large number of unrelated products. It caters to different kinds of markets and segments and it caters to different market segments with the same products also and customers are uh, you know geographically scattered. Uh, for example, you know companies deal with both B 2 B and B 2 C uh, and, and uh, you know uh, through their different channels and through their different channel formats and this leads to uh, you know marketing and distribution efficiency and effectiveness. So, in the case of multi channel marketing system a combination of channels is used by companies to reach out to customers. Uh, the same company may be dealing with B 2 B, the same company may be dealing with B 2 C with their broad product assortment which may be related or unrelated products and it, it caters to different market segments and uh, where with the same products also and uh, so, so and especially in the case where customers are geographically scattered multi channel marketing systems really help. Now, let us come to the next topic which is channel design. Now, what are the factors which affect a channel design? One is with respect to the product assortment and the nature of the product, the, the market coverage in terms of width and depth, long term commitments to channel partners, customer service levels, affordability uh, and channel control requirements of the company and, the, and its products. So, let us discuss each one of these subsequently. 
Now, one of the major factors which affects the choice of a channel is product assortment and nature of the product. Not all products can, can, be, can be sold via the same channel. Channels also vary with respect to offering service to customers, uh, whether it is with respect to time and speed also. So, here we see that product assortment and the nature of the product has a big, big is, is a major factor to determine uh, the, the, the design of a channel. Similarly, the depth and width of the market, channels vary with respect to reaching with, with respect to their ability to reach the audience or to target segment and internet today has been realized as a means for reaching the large number of customers uh, as a means for reaching a large number of customers today uh, all across the country all across the world long term commitments of channel partners is also another factor which affects channel design choice and what uh, we, we we what what is important here is in terms of the terms and conditions uh, between channel partners which can vary. Also, the long term orientation uh, is something which creates a win win situation for both. So, companies always look for channel partners which who will be able to provide uh, you know a long term commitment so that uh, it can be a win win situation for both the company and its channel partners. Customer service levels, channels also vary with respect to their capacity to offer services to customers. The more the touch points, the easier for consumers to reach the sellers. So, this is again a vital factor. Affordability of the channel uh, with reference to channel costs has to be taken into account because the channel cost sh should not inflate the overall cost of the product. So, it has to be kept in mind that uh, you know the benefits that uh, upon derives uh, through a channel. Uh, are actually much more than the cost that would be incurred to um, you know to to manage the channel so the channel costs have to be kept in mind and uh, this is again a major factor which will drive uh, a decision which will which will affect a decision for a channel uh, design channel control requirements of the company and its products also are a major factor which uh, which which affect channel uh, design uh, channel uh, uh, activities with reference to the distribution channel might be outsourced or owned depending upon the needs and requirements of the organization. So, all of these are factors which affect the channel design choice by an organization. Now, what are the steps in channel design? There are a series of steps which are involved in designing of channels. First of which involves deciding on customer needs, specifying goals and objectives of the channel, identifying channel uh, MEMP systems which will help achieve goals and objectives, calculating probable costs of operating a channel system, comparing and evaluating the available alternatives and then finalizing the best channel alternative. So, let us begin with uh, a discussion on some of the issues which play a very important role uh, in uh, channel design. Customer needs. Now, what do we mean by customer needs? Customer needs here refer to uh, you know the lot size which a customer would uh, prefer buying, or the waiting time, or the kind of product assortment and variety that he needs, and the kind of uh, place utility that he would require. Now, when we talk of a lot size, lot size here uh, is uh, you know refers to the most suitable package size which a consumer can or should purchase at a particular point. Uh, the waiting time refers to the time gap between the time when a person realizes that he requires a product to the time when he actually makes a purchase of the same. So, ideally the waiting time for a customer must be 0. Variety refers to the kind of product and brand assortment, uh, the packing package sizes etcetera and the place utility here refers to uh, uh, the place where a buyer would want to purchase from. Convenience and accessibility are major factors here which uh, play a very important role uh, you know as far as the customers uh, decision to buy uh, from a from an outlet is concerned. So, uh, accessibility and convenience are two factors which each and every customer uh, you know would, would, would keep in mind and this is something which uh, a, a marketer or an organization must also pay attention to. The second thing which we could disc which we will discuss here is the channel design components. Talking about the channel design components, uh, there is a commercial part and the logistic part. The commercial part here refers to the revenue generation and the logistic part refers to the physical delivery of the product to the end customer. After sales, uh, support in the form of service is extremely essential, extremely important because subsequent business from a customer 
uh, depends upon the after sales support and the after sales experience uh, he has from a company uh, or, or, and, and from a product. The different parts uh, need to be taken care of by different people uh, in an organization. So, there has to be a team which takes care of uh, the sales and the commercial part, there has to be a team in the organization which takes place of which takes care of the logistics, there has to be a team which takes care of the after sales support and so uh, the channel design components must ensure uh, that there is a commercial part, a logistics part and an after sales support. The third is with respect to channel design issues uh, which would be in identifying what are the various tasks and activity and who shall perform them. What are the what is the task and activities relationship to the service levels required? How many channel members are required, and what is the relationship between different categories of channel members, uh, which is with respect to uh, you know the 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 manufacturer, the wholesaler, the retailer, the stockist, etc. And what shall be the roles and responsibilities? How shall the channel members be evaluated, and what shall be their remuneration? So these are certain issues which need which 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 need to be taken care of when companies decide on their channel design. Now, coming to the channel design process, there are four different stages of the channel design process, we segmentation, positioning, focus and development. Now, first is segmentation, it is all about identifying clusters of customers who are homogeneous within and heterogeneous outside. They share similar needs, wants, preferences and must be surveyed, served by different kinds of channel members who are specialized to cater to distinct segments. So, it is very important that companies identify their segments and then uh, have uh, sales teams and have sales personnel uh, who are specialized in dealing with distinct segments. This would help the sales manager in selecting uh, you know uh, appropriate uh, sales teams and sales mem and and uh, channel members it would also help uh, the sales managers in 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 selecting the right kind of dealers distributors stockists and other channel partners who would be able to serve the distinct segments in the most effective and efficient manner so segmentation helps the sales managers in selecting channel partners for serving um, the different segments the second is positioning. Now, at this stage channel mem elements are identified and positioned to service the customers by creating a best fit with the customers needs. The channel elements and their skills, abilities, experience, infrastructure uh, etc. Uh, is taken into account and uh, the customer service levels, customers requirements etc. are also uh, you know taken into account and a best fit is, 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 is attempted at uh, so that uh, you know the channel elements uh, who are identified and positioned to service the customers uh, best fit with the needs and requirements of uh, the customers. So, decisions with respect to the type of channels, number of intermediaries uh, uh, are taken uh, both with respect to the type of channels and the number of intermediaries. Also by positioning channels in the right manner, sales managers can attract customers towards purchase an ideal fit. Uh, to service in best possible ways by taking uh, decisions with respect to number of channels, the type of channels helps the organizations in the big way. So, uh, an ideal fits uh, to service in best possible ways by taking decisions like the number of uh, channels uh, and the type of channels uh, can help organizations uh, in major ways. Focus. Uh, the third stage here is focus. At this stage, uh, segments with which the company wants to deal with are identified and this is very important because a company may not be able to deal with all the segments due to constraints with respect to manpower or with respect to finance finances. So, uh, uh, keeping in mind the different segments, uh, the company would decide as to which segment it would like to cater to and uh, this is particularly important when companies are not able to deal with all the segments due to constraints uh, be it physical, be it financial or be it manpower. Focus also helps organizations in making best use of its resources. Finally, we have development where the channel system is finally executed. The channel designs of competitors should, could, should, could be analyzed and benchmarking techniques could be used to select the best channel system and the best channel alternative and the execution of the channel system becomes easy for a company when the channel systems are uh, already exist and are being modified. Uh, of course, uh, when they are going to be executed for the same first time it is difficult. So, the execution of a channel becomes easy for an organization when channel systems are 
not being executed for the first time. The next we come to evaluation of channel systems and the criteria which are used to evaluate channel systems. Channel alternatives are evaluated and channel design is finalized after deciding upon the kind of segments to be served and the serve customer service levels required. The various criteria that need to be taken into account while evaluating the different channel alternatives and channel systems are cost, ability to manage and control, adaptability and the volume and range of products to be handled. So, first let us discuss the cost factor. An organization must be able to determine if the current sales force which it has will be capable of handling the distribution of products or not. In case it can be done by the company itself with little expansion, companies must opt for this. Otherwise, companies must look to other options and the customer needs and service levels must be taken into consideration. It is noteworthy uh, that every channel comes with a cost and it must be ensured that sales and customer service benefits it must exceed the cost of managing a channel. A channel which is the least costly must be selected. Second, the ability to manage and control. The organization must be able to assess the kind of control that it would want to exercise over its channel partners and the kind of roles, responsibilities it would want its channel partners to perform and the kind of obligations that they must meet. Operating rules with respect to uh, you know um, coverage of the market, calls to be made, a number of calls and productivity of calls, terms of offering credit between parties, displays, promotions, investments and cooperation uh, in promoting point of purchase display etc. must be clearly specified and the channel partners must be uh, adequate, uh, must be properly informed about all of these rules uh, and all of these policies and procedures so that uh, it, you know the control can be exercised in a more effic efficient and effective manner. The third is adaptability. The partnering channel must not only uh, you know uh, help the company uh, in managing the present sales and, in, and, and, and help the company uh, you know uh, with the current product range and with the current uh, forecast, but it must also work towards growing future sales as well. The channel members must be ready to adapt to new change, new new environmental conditions, whether it is with respect to changing marketing conditions and they must adopt proper measures with respect to introduction of new products, dumping of old products by the organization, addition of new territories, new segments, pushing sales when prices are, 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 are increased, offering additional services for customer retention, handling customer complaints and dealing with customers in case of price changes. The next is the volume and range to be handled. So, uh, here what we are referring to is uh, you know that the, comp ch the channel members must have enough resources uh, and infrastructure base to support the company when the volume of sales increases. This is very important when the company is planning to expand its businesses uh, whether it is with respect to new product launch or entering into new territories. So, the channel partners must supplement the efforts of the company in reaching a wider audience, a wider segment with new products. So, the other factors also which must be taken into consideration, uh, factors which relate to market requirements, be it customer service expectations or competitors or product distinctiveness which, have, with, 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 which relates to uh, physical characteristics of the product or company characteristics uh, like the size of the company, its market share or the nature of product handled and the product mix, the financial status and resources or it could be also the channel members abilities and infrastructure, environmental factors etc. which need to be taken care of while evaluating channel, channel alternatives and deciding on particular channel system. Next we come to managing channel partners. Now, when we talk of uh, you know ch managing cha channel partners, we actually refer to selecting them, training them, motivating them and evaluating them. So, it is to start with selecting channel partners, it is highly important to select the right number and the right kind of channel members, uh, issues with respect to adequacy or quantity uh, that is the number is an important issue. The other important part is the appropriateness or the quality or the competence of the uh, channel members. So, how uh, can organizations find suitable channel partners? One is through their own sales force team where the company sales force works in distinct sales territories in the field and they can identify and look for uh, people who would be willing to work 
uh, as channel partners with the company. Uh, companies could also advertise in newspapers and in the press. So, advertisements must contain relevant details uh, in terms of the expectations from channel members, their roles and responsibilities, infrastructure and resources required as well as the financial status and the offer must be very lucrative so as to attract distrib distributors with very good uh, performance records of the past. Existing channel members can also uh, be a source uh, for, for, for uh, you know finding uh, suitable channel partners. References from existing channel partners can be used and this is a very uh, you know uh, inexpensive method as background checks can be easily done and of course the channel uh, the, the competitors channel partners can also be used uh, especially uh, you know if the, if the if this particular company which or the competitor company are not particular about exclusive distribution. The selection criteria for selecting channel partners can be qualitative as well as quantitative. Uh, qualitative is with respect to flexibility and adaptability of the channel partner, his reputation in the market and business, image, goodwill, attitude, commitment and willingness to help customers. The quantitative measures uh, could be the range of product handled and whether similar product lines uh, handled as those which are being dealt with by the company, infrastructure and location, related experience, financial status and solvency as well as uh, investment um, capabilities, market coverage, sales volume earned in the past few years, uh, customer based, new customers earned in the past few years, all of these could be measures uh, or you know or on could, could, could be criteria on the basis of which uh, channel part channel members can be evaluated before they are actually chosen as channel partners. The training of channel partners is extremely uh, crucial and uh, typically because the channel members represent the company hence they must be trained to behave in a manner which would be as per the likes of the company. So, the training programs here could be both initial and continual sales sales training programs and uh, they could be they, they, these training programs should be held for both the channel member and his sales personnel. So, it could be uh, the a training program for dealers and distributors as well as their salesmen and training could be both on the job as well as the classroom training and the content uh, must include uh, you know a, a, you know a, inputs on uh, product and product lines, pricing policies, promotion policies, major customers, delivery and installation policies, after sales services, record keeping and report submissions as well as ability to deal with frequently asked questions. To keep the sales uh, to, sorry, to keep the channel members motivated companies must use both monetary and non-monetary incentives. So, motivating channel members is extremely crucial which we have seen and discussed in the past. Monetary uh, in the rewards, monetary incentives could be in the form of rewards, commissions, trade promotions and non-monetary incentives could be in the form of sales contests and meetings, appreciation, recognition, certificates and honors, training programs, etc. Specific measures that companies must take to encourage channel members to sell more uh, is by uh, sharing promotional risks with the company and using promotional methods, both of which will help the, uh, the organization in motivating its channel members. Uh, incentives may be paid to channel members, uh, special deals for prices can be offered to dealers, uh, you know, which would uh, induce them to keep large inventories and which they would later push them to sell more to their uh, customers so that the stocks can be cleared fast. Dealer incentives should be linked with the sales volume targets to push sales. Similarly, incentives may be offered to sales staffs of channel partners where special incentive programs can be created for the sales personnel of the distributors and, and the dealers. Slabs can be created from the, for, for them uh, wherein with more sales more incentives can be offered. Also non-monetary benefits like paid holidays and trips for family etc can be used to stimulate them to sell more. Of course, and of course, incentives can be provided to consumers as well in the form of coupons, free samples uh, and other sales promotional measures, uh, you know, which, which can stimulate end consumers to buy the product. We come to evaluation of channel members, companies must evaluate their distribution network and channel partners for assessing the effectiveness and efficiency from time to time uh, with respect to achievement of sales volume targets, uh, outlet productivity, service selling, developmental selling order placement and inventory management, customer relationship management, etc. So, this would help uh, execute uh, you know motivational programs and also give insights into tra training programs to be designed and implemented. Evaluation will also help 
decide on the rewards and incentives to be given to the channel partners and to the sales personnel of the channel uh, of the trade uh, channel uh, members and uh, evaluation acts as a vital tool uh, also in term in by dis in deciding about modifying the distribution channel networks as well as whether relationship with existing channel members must be continued or there is a need uh, for termination of relationships and beginning of a relationship with a new channel partner. So, with this we come to an end of our lecture on uh, channel systems and on uh, channel management and uh, we, we shall be discussing the subsequent topics in the next lecture which is part 2. I hope you found this lecture beneficial, thank you.